to just over the five gallon mark and I just took a temperature reading at 74 degrees which is absolutely perfect. So before we get too much further down the line I'm going to take a uh, hydrometer reading here. Uh, you know me, I always like to kind of rinse out the inside of this thing. Super hot water. Just to kind of clear up that salt. So, uh, if you guys are just tuning in to this for the first time here, this is the first series you've seen of mine. This is a uh, thief. Uh, you put it in to the brew, and you pull it back up um, after just a second, and it pulls a sample of the wort right up like that. And uh, then we take our hydrometer, which measures the specific gravity of the uh, liquid that's inside of it, and this first reading is what we compare to the final gravity reading that is uh, basically uh, the way to figure out our alcohol content. So, let's give this, you put it in and you give it a little spin to knock any bubbles off. And we are at 1.042, which is perfect. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and put that sample back in there. All right, and then we will get our yeast. All right, so we've got Jerry in place, and he is going to do the ceremonial yeasting of the brew. <laughs> and we just uh, he'll just sprinkle it right across the top there. And uh, I usually take the spoon and sort of uh, pop it down in just a little bit to get it going, but um, sprinkling it right on top. There you go. Perfect. All righty. So then, uh, yeah, like I said, I just kind of tamp it in here a bit, just to kind of get them rehydrated uh, quicker. Um, you can go through the whole process of uh, getting them, uh, you know, putting it in a glass of water and, uh, you know, letting it rehydrate for 10, 15 minutes. You can do that. You don't have to. Um, I don't particularly see the purpose of it, so. All right. So we've got that in place there. Uh, now what we'll do, we'll take our lid, get it in place here. Actually, I'm going to slide this over. Oops. Get it lined up where I want it here. We are in. So now we've got the sanitized airlock. You just fit it into place. You take the inner piece, pop it down into there, and then I take um, usually a bit of sanitizer right out of here. You might as well use sanitizer in here, and you fill it up to the line right about midway through there. Perfect. And then we take our cap. Put it on. And voila! We now have our wort um, ready to be fermented. So we're just going to let this now, uh, I'm going to take it back into the brewing corner, you guys are familiar with that, and we will uh, basically just let it sit there for the next uh, five to seven days for its primary fermentation. And then uh, once that's finished, we will pick up with the coffee part of this recipe um, with, with that secondary fermentation. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is the uh, oatmeal stout. Um, man, this thing is getting good as you give it a little bit of age, you know. It's, a, it's amazing what the difference, you know, four or five more days can make. You guys got to try this one. But hey, 
there's one thing that we could do that could make this beer a bit better. And that's to add some coffee. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. We are doing now the uh, racking of uh, the Java Stout from the uh, primary into the carboy. And it's at this point in the uh, process that we add our um, add the coffee. Um, they call for it to uh, for you to brew eight cups of coffee with all these beans. So you make a very very strong brew and you add it right to the secondary fermenter. I do not have a drip coffee maker, so I'm actually going to be making it with uh, a French press. Um, I'll have to do it in two intervals. And so what I've decided to do is to brew the first batch of coffee, add it to the carboy, and then get my beer racking. While the beer is racking, I'll get the second batch uh, of uh, coffee going. And then we'll add the second batch um, at the very end of it. So kind of just stagger out uh, when I'm adding uh, all that coffee to the secondary. Uh, so, without further ado, we've got to uh, get the water here, heating up, and I've got my coffee grinder here, plugged in and ready to go. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and divide these up into two separate, uh, two separate bags. I'll put half in here, we'll put half just in a cup to hold it uh, until I can get to brewing it after we've racked the beer into the carboy. And we should be good to go. So, see you guys in just a second. First steps first, get that away from the hot flame. Duh, Joe. <laughs> it's been a long day at work, what can I say? We're going to take this bag here. I'm just going to cut the whole top right off it. And I'm just going to sort of hold half of them in and let half of them go. half and half. Man, you guys got to do this. This smells so good. If I can think of one thing that's uh, as precious to me as beer, that's coffee. And this is awesome. This smells amazing. Oh, it's got that nice, really, really deep, deep roasted smell to it. Mm. I may have to save these and just brew coffee for myself here in just a few. <laughs> okay, so I think. Okay, so I think that'll do. We'll just fill it up to about there, and we'll get grinding. Gravy. Doesn't have to be ground super fine, right? Oh my gosh. And when this is ground, guys, it smells so good. I can't wait to taste this brew, man. Groovy. A little coarse, doesn't matter. Okay, and now we just wait for our water to get done boiling, and uh, we'll uh, should be done in any minute here. So I'm going to go ahead and get to sanitizing um, all the equipment over here. Got the uh, I'm grabbing the spoon just in case I need to give it a little stir. We've got our carboy stopper, uh, the racking or the auto siphon, and our siphon tubing. And so that should be all we need to sanitize. I'm going to use some star sand on that. Okay, so our water is done boiling. Um, I shut it off just a few seconds ago. You need to give it a second to cool down so that way it's not boiling temperatures when you put it in to hit your coffee when you're using these French presses. So, without further ado, we'll put this nice piping hot water right onto it. Perfect. Got a wooden spoon here. I always use the end. I don't know why. It's an old, old habit of mine, I guess. 
There's all kinds of different schools of thought when using one of these French presses is to not stir, stir. I always give it a stir at the very beginning to sort of get all the uh, coffee wet. And then I let it set for a few minutes. And then right before I actually press it, I give it another quick stir. So that's all that needs. Now we'll wait about uh, four or five minutes until it's done brewing and we'll pour it off. Thank you.